Great. We're live. We're live. We're live. We're live. Cool. So, hi. I am Meg. Um, I've had a really pretty, I've had a super fun day, to be honest. Um, just putting together some uh, content that I've wanted to do for a while. And I am so pumped to have this conversation. She's just jumped on um with a beautiful oh, old dear friend of mine that we we don't really see each other that often uh we haven't seen each other in a long time but our journeys and our ride has been so similar so i'm gonna welcome on this absolute powerhouse of a woman uh, i know her as cricket um she runs a beautiful and incredible and empowering business called lighter living with cricket so make sure you jump on her page uh, I am just going to invite her on the best I can. Um, please don't look. Why can't I? Wait, that's fine. Why sent Trina? No. Uh, so now, Cricket, if you can just send me a request to go live on here, there should be somewhere. And I oh, wonder, there we go, that could be it. There you are, accept. Uh, should see my setup up here, it's pretty dodgy, is what you can probably tell. Um, so I've just invited Cricket on board. Oh my god, hey, <laughs> nailed it, nailed it, babe. This is so cute. I've actually never done a share one. Why is my head so big? I need to put this back more. Hang on, okay, I can handle that. Oh, amazing. How are Hi. you? Oh, so good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for jumping on. We should have had loads of conversations properly before we did this, just so we could get oh, everything out of the way and then get to it. Look, <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree. We can, we can do it afterwards. But um, cool. I'm, I'm so, so grateful. Um, yeah. I was just sort of saying before, I, our journeys are so similar. Yeah, uh, they definitely are. And we we very often post uh, something up on Instagram or Facebook, and we're like, oh my god, we're so vibing on exactly the same level. Mm. And with it's that, funny and you you, re you reach out and you say that, but there's been many times I've got I have done it, but there's many times I haven't done it when you've actually done it because I'm like I've just got to stop doing this. This is like getting single white female stalky. Relax. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, but it's, I just, I couldn't think of, you know, I, as most of you guys know, I've been speaking a fair bit on um, body image, on selfie and Snapchat dysmorphia um, over the last week or so, and had some conversations with some beautiful people. So Dr. Kirsty Seward, Tara Green, um, one of my friends um, also who's been through eating disorders. And I really wanted to really end this week on a vibe with this amazing um, lady. So Cricket, just tell us a bit about what you do. Um, about lighter living cricket. Um, well, thank you for your kind words. Um, first of all, I really think that you're a powerhouse. And I wrote a comment back to you, you're a powerhouse. And I hadn't written through what you had written to me. And you wrote, she's a powerhouse. <laughs> but I have to be honest, I I do look from afar. I will I will introduce myself, but I really do look from afar. And I do send you private message of messages of admiration for being on the front line and really bringing. I actually feel a bit emotional. Same. Yeah. Know. Um, yeah, and just being on the front line and putting yourself out there because you know it's it is really close to my heart as well. Um, so I just want to say first and foremost, I really feel like you're the powerhouse, and we all do it in different ways. Um, but thank you for having me, and obviously this is close to my heart because I do know Meg, whew, and I know Meg's history, and we have a very similar history. And you know, I guess I feel grateful that I'm vulnerable because once I lose this vulnerability, I probably will stop doing what I'm doing. You know, I, I do this work because I am so passionate about it. Um, yeah. And yeah, and I'm really passionate on sharing that vulnerability is strength, even though it feels disgusting. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you. And it's so, it so does. I, I will just introduce myself of that, from that. Um, because I am a very feely, emotional, deep thinker, big hearted, um, and I feel a lot. I always have. And when I didn't learn to trust the feelings that I had or 
go with my emotions um, and honoured those parts. I used to have a, you know, my inner critic was very big and it used to really talk down to myself. If I had have done that, you know, many years ago before I started doing my work in the world, um, I would have beat myself up. My inner critic would have crippled me. Like, what's wrong with you? Why aren't you like other people? Why are you so emotional? So I really just want to say it was learning how to let those emotions run through me that did shift me from my history of having an eating disorder as well. So yeah. what I'll talk about is I did, um, before I was in the wellness world, so I'm a mind-body coach, how yeah. I got that title, I'll work backwards, um, was I originally started studying gestalt psychotherapy after my healing from an eating disorder um, because I really wanted to work with people with eating disorders. And then after I started studying for two and a half years and I really realised it's not just eating disorders, it's disordered eating. It, yeah. it really, like, you know, it, it's like the percentages of people with disordered eating is insane. Um, why I did... And, and that's just, that's either way too, isn't it? It's, you know, either eating too much or eating too little. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, just, uh, just on that note, there's a two people um, that uh, I'm actually about to share over this next week on YouTube. One of them is uh, skin and bones and the other one is the size of a house and both have disordered eating and they can't do anything about it. They're, they're going in these different directions uh, because it's what we are practising and what we know. So it's and, yeah, and either it's, 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 it's crippling. And what comes to me when you talk like that I have seen an image um, of, you know, this woman who, you know, labelled obese and then this woman who was anorexic and they're both sitting there yeah. and they've got their heads yeah. together. And, yeah. and it's not about the external. It's not about, you know, when our bodies get a certain way, we're free from this or, you know, anything like that. It's about the inner prisoner inside that is so trapped yeah. that no matter what size you are, it doesn't yeah. matter. And we get taught... <laughs> to you know to control this through food and through body and through diet but it's like it's it keeps us stuck because it really has nothing to do with food body and diet and as I'm talking you know I, I actually remember going to my first psychologist so I got into the beauty world I became a beauty therapist because I thought oh god you know this is a horrible feeling inside you know these feelings of overwhelm and judgment on myself on loathing and comparison and consumed <laughs> with yeah myself because it was like you know I'd get up in the morning and the first thing I would do was put my hand on my stomach literally I remember and it was like whatever that felt like that would dictate my day so how yeah. I would show up with people or you know what I would eat or how much I would exercise or if I would go out so it was like I was trying to control who I was through my exterior you know trying yeah. to trying to get on top of the emotions and things so I got into the beauty world because I thought oh god that's the pill which we learn <laughs> it's like I'm mm. fantastic I will become, you know, my exterior perfect and then I won't have these feelings inside anymore yeah. of not being good enough or judging myself constantly or trying to be like others or, you know, all of that. If I can get the outside right, then I'll have that thing that they've got. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. I did that. I did that. I became a beauty therapist. had a really successful business. Um, yeah, and I remember. So yeah, yeah. Constant, confident person. But because I was only dealing with the physical and not um, – getting a check on my mental, my thoughts, and not dealing with the emotions that were running through me, it was the beginning. Well, it actually wasn't the beginning, but it was where my eating disorder peaked because yeah. the outside was what I had been taught was yeah. what I was meant to look like, and it was, yeah. worse. it was a peak of my eating disorder. I felt lower. I felt crippled. I felt so shameful and wrong and because I was like, now what? So... On the birth of my first daughter, I um, decided, because, again, I didn't have self-worth at that time, but once she was in my belly, I realised, yeah. you know, God, I can't be this person anymore. You know, mm. I'm on self-worth, but I can't. I have to do whatever I can, whatever I can, to kind of protect her from ever feeling like I felt. So then I told my poor husband after, like, I don't even know, it's horrible, 15 years maybe together that I had an eating disorder. And that was the beginning of my crack open and my actual crack open. So he didn't know before this? No idea. Nobody knew. Isn't Nobody it such knew. a thing we hide, isn't it? 
it's very clever and it's very manipulative. And even, yeah. you know, when I went to my first two psychiatrists, I lied there. <laughs> it was still, it was still taken over. So what, yeah. I, I won't talk about what helped me, but mine was more of a breakthrough spiritual awakening that has yeah. helped me shift through mine than anything. Yeah. Um, yeah. But basically I transitioned from the beauty world into the wellness world, really wanted to work with people with eating disorders because I went through my own healing process and was like, oh, my God, I'm free. It was like yeah. the only way I can explain it was like if I know this feeling now, if I know that it is possible not to be trapped and consumed and a prisoner in your own mind and body, I have to spread mm -hmm. it with everyone. But then I left psychotherapy after, again, I said before, I wanted to work with people with disordered eatings because it's not just eating yeah. disorders. I started studying the psychology of eating, which is what the lens I work through now. Um, and that's, I guess, how I got the title, Mind Body Coach, Psychotherapist, Wellness Coaching, Psychology of Eating, yeah. Junkie for Personal Development, and this is it now. <laughs> an absolute powerhouse at well, that as well. Thank you. It's, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So that's my why well. I do. And I, again... Yeah, just my whole my whole mission is to help people kind of unplug from this thing that we get taught that when the yeah. external looks a certain way, we'll feel good because yeah. it, it's got to be the balance of the mental, the emotional, the physical and the spiritual. 100%. Yeah. 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 It, it, that's exactly it. And it's, you know, uh, I, uh, you know, Cricket was just saying that it was the birth of her first daughter, China, isn't it? Yeah. Um, that was that tipping point and, you know, my tipping point also, my spiritual awakening or is it breakdown is what Brene Brown calls it. <laughs> I had one of those. I'm yeah. going to be honest, I'm a total fan of breakdowns. I'm like, can yeah. you break down more? Can you break down? Oh, 100%. Break down? It's, it's so good. It forces you to go, hang on a second, do I want this to continue yeah. or yeah. do I, am I going to start to do something about it? It's going to be yeah. freaking hard. Yeah. But that's my choice. And, you know, I was, as what Krika mentioned, you know, uh, mine happened at 33 when I was pushing and I was just all focused on my body. Because mm. everything I, mm. you know, my eating disorder or disordered eating, whatever you want to call it, started from the age of six years old from the belief of someone else's words of you're not pretty enough to be on our team. And I took her word and I made up my story for nearly 30 years from that. Mm. So I practice perfection, I practice people pleasing, I practice being the best and being liked by everyone. And I needed to be popular, I needed to be uh, someone for, for someone, I needed to have this validation consistently and I still never, ever felt worthy. Mm -hmm. Because as what Cricket said, I was looking for it externally, I was looking for it from others. I didn't know how to look for it for myself. Mm -hmm. So I kept at trying to get this perfect body that pushed me into so many days training. I was training others. I was 50 sessions a week, not my own, but PT. And I was just in the gym, just working on this physical self. Where do you stop? Mm. So I, w I got stopped. The universe stopped me. Mm. You know, I literally, I was that tired and exhausted and mm. my hair was falling out. I was bloated. I was so sick. Mm. And I literally drove out in front of a truck one morning on my way to PT at like 33. And I was so lucky because in that moment I, like, had that breakdown. I'm like, I'm, I'm fucked. I'm, I'm at a real breakdown. That was, as what Kuki said, that was the peak of my eating disorder. You know, I was still suffering through bulimia. So when, I, when things got challenging, I would 100% go and, you know, do the thing. And I'd be like, why am I still doing this? I'm 33 years old. Then I'd judge and then I'd get critical mm -hmm. on myself. And I'd hate myself even more. Mm -hmm. And it was at that age where everything just fell to pieces. Mm -hmm. And it's in that moment where I had a choice to pick up the glass and put it back together or mm -hmm. to continue with these same patterns. And mm -hmm. we then we then start to do the work. And mm -hmm. this is what I want to ask you as well, mm -hmm. uh, Cricket. Mm -hmm. it, it's not easy, right? So we had that point where it was like your daughter and it was my mm -hmm. um, breakdown where we're like, we need to do something. Mm -hmm. But what does someone do? when you figure out you need to change, but mm. it's hard work, you know, like it, it's not easy, but it's harder to actually stay the same. So I, I just want to ask you, 
you, you know, you mentioned, I guess, you know, what you do now and things like that. But what was the first things you started to do when you started to go, you know, what, this is what I need to do for myself and for my daughter? What were some of the things you started to do for yourself that were different? Okay, so after the initial, I can't be this person anymore, I have to <laughs> come out. <laughs> yeah. Is that, is that what you mean? Yeah. So I yeah. think because I had already had a taste of how good it felt to feel free because my daughter was in yeah. my belly and I, it was the first time I actually ever ate food without guilt. I was like eating to nourish. I had, it was actually, I think my parents are Irish, so I don't know if I do things opposite, but I've told a lot of people <laughs> that. And it was like, when she was in my belly, I ate. I had no guilt. I had my, you know, my gut out. I was so proud and I was free. So I'd already tasted what it felt like to be free. So after mm. the first time when I thought, I can't do this anymore, I was like, oh. Okay, so I tried to do it by myself and I tried to do it the way I still do it every day now, but without mm. not enough environmental support. So I went yeah. straight to all the loathing, all the patterns, all the habits, you know, the, the overwhelming feeling of emotions coming out, me not being able to deal with it, wanting to go to the cupboard and then eat over it to just keep those emotions down, but then feeling so out of control that I would literally, you know, to get my control back because there's so much loathing, go to the shower, I get it back up and then it was just this spiral. So all of that was still happening in me. Yeah. But I had this determination that I was like, it was like that fire that had broke through, like my soul had broke through. So I yeah. was kind of like, you know, the, that part would be there and I'm like, I am enough, I am enough, I've got this, yeah. I'm enough. So I was doing all these affirmations of, okay, what is here? Don't trust your head. What's in front of me right now? Just breathe. Okay. And literally it got what I was doing now without enough environmental support exhausted yep. me so much I actually got glandular fever and made myself sick <laughs> so you can see uh, and that's why I sometimes you know with social media I want to put things up saying you know affirmations because I do I put them up and say I am do this but I feel like such a hypocrite because I'm like that works but we need more support that support in our environment we need friends we need I, I really yep. feel doing this every day and do, doing what you do Meg is healing because we're still healing as we've got our platform. Yep. So we like always need people, yeah. help someone else, have a coach, have a psychologist, um, yeah. have a supportive partner, be around people that do not trigger your body image. If you are feeling not good in yourself, don't be around people who aren't there yet in that moment without judgment yeah. for them as yeah. well. You know, protect yourself. Yeah, um, and the environment. A more support, yeah. Yeah, like this, you know, and, and this by means of uh, like a phone device. I can't pick up my phone because I'm on it. But it's just what are you feeding yourself with? And it's, you know, like I uh, said, so it's just where we, where we put our energy and our attention, that is what gets stronger. And it is being proven on many, many levels and in science is our environment mm. um, that comes in and it shapes our behaviour. Um, and you know, yes, I'm, I'm a huge fan of affirmations myself as well. It's something I do every single morning when I wake up. I state how I'm going to feel. I feel it in my bones. Mm. And when I was moving out of mine, my, my, it was such an effort because it was, as what Cricket said, the thoughts would just come back in. I'd look in the mirror and my affirmation that morning would be, okay, I'll choose to be kind. Mm. And I'd get up in the mirror and I'd see my, my belly or my thighs and I'd judge them and I'd go, oh, I'm judging. And it was this constant battle with the eating disorder and the thoughts and then the affirmation and you'd be exhausted. But it was a practice that slowly got stronger over time. But we had to change our environment. So I started to notice what I was doing on my social media. I started to notice who I was hanging around with in the gym. I started to notice how things made me feel. And if it wasn't lighting me up, if it wasn't making me feel good, and if it was making me um, question myself, then I started to separate myself from that and find something, someone or an environment that would make me feel good and buzzy and go, wow, that feels nurturing and safe. There's so many yeah. factors and, and it's and, all and out. That, and, and I totally agree. It's like that it's the checking in with self first. It's like the slowing it all down enough, like self-awareness, that's like the key and it's so yeah. and it's so hard and it's annoying and and for me it's <laughs> like you know I felt really lucky because my eating disorder broke me 
I, yeah. I got to the point, it was like, okay, if you ask me, you know, what's the first point of call and we're, and we're trying to work it out together, I think yeah. the first point of call is I realised, when I realised I can't trust my mind. Yeah. Like, so I went, like, I can't trust my head. I can't yeah. trust these thoughts. I can't trust it. I, I have to become more conscious and more self-aware. So what I did do, actually, this is my little formula that I do use and I still use mm -hmm. because I'm yeah. human. <laughs> And, and if my mind yeah. doesn't support me, it's like a plug can pop back into that part of my mind, trigger my inner child, my subconscious, yeah. and literally go, oh, my God, limited thinking, calorie control, train your ass off. And I'm literally so aware now. I'm like, ah, oh. wow, that was Yeah, crazy. it's like freaking alarm balls, isn't it? It's just, <laughs> just crazy. So, like, whoa, is this happening around me? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And so the way I do it now before the environment, because yeah. again, after I said after the birth of my daughter and I realised for her, so if anyone's got kids or for yourself, Meg, for your inner child, it's yeah. like I, I keep thinking, would I say this to my daughter? Would I say yeah. that to her? Would I say that? No. And my little girl's still in me. So every time, you know, I might go, oh, God, what are you doing? It's like, oh, my gosh, that subconscious belief is old school. I'm going to adult her and I'm going to tell her exactly what she needed to hear when she was little, which was, you're fucking perfect just the way you are. We got plugged into this world that really needs us not to feel worthy or else there's no money. So yes. I'm not saying unplug yep. on that because use it because it's amazing and to feel good, but not to not feel good if you can't do it. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. We spoke about that the other day. Yeah. I think that was a really powerful thing. Just to know that it's okay to feel shitty sometimes, that it's okay to not feel okay in your body, to um, uh, to just feel blah, to feel off, to be like, oh, this is really hard today. That yeah. is all okay. Well, I have, like, my biggest conversations, when you touched on this to say would I do this and with the girls and, I love talking and brainstorming because sometimes I don't even know. It's like just trust your heart on what comes up. But mm -hmm. when you said something like, you know, how do you keep your girls feeling good in their bodies or something like that, and I didn't realise, but I said to tell them it's okay to not feel good in their bodies, to tell them that it's okay to compare, to tell them that we are actually set up to be that in this world. However, don't believe that. Don't believe yeah. those thoughts that come yeah. in like that because we get – taught them we get the, taught them in the womb we get taught it from media we get taught it from magazines and i don't think we can be privileged unless we're living in a rock not to be affected yep. by it so no, it makes us who we are it's 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 fucking hard yeah and it's our journey it was never meant to be easy the buddha says all of life is suffering and it is we all struggle mm. and it's just going through the, the ride no matter how messy no matter what we go through and just acknowledging it, I think, and just going, yeah, this is really hard right now. This is really messy. I'm really judging my body right now. I'm really comparing it. Mm. Bringing yourself to presence by actually saying it out loud and just, and this is what, you know, you, you've got your method and similar thing I've got mine. It's to bring to presence. Both of what we talk about is like, oh, okay, I'm experiencing this in my body. What am I feeling? What are my shoulders doing? Am I closing? Am I opening? Mm. And how is that making me feel? I'm feeling anxious. I'm feeling scared. I'm feeling uh, unworthy. Mm. And by saying that to yourself, you can bring yourself to a place of presence and go, okay, I see you. I feel you. This is okay. Mm. And then just choose from that moment to be kind, whatever that is. Yeah. Um, can I bring up? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I know. I just, it's funny because I love, like, it's like, I love these, like, it's Buddha. It is. There's this woman that I've been obsessed with now for a few years called Glennon Doyle. She does yes, yeah, 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 untamed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, untamed. And it's the same yeah. thing. It's like we're in her vulnerability, she it's like we can do hard things. The myth was that it was meant to be easy. The myth yeah. was that it's going to be butterflies and once you look like this, everything's happy. It's like, no, this is the arena. This is life. It's like get messy and untidy. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's it so is. And I, it's, I think it's slowly getting out there. It really is. It's just understanding that we, we're meant to feel – the highs, we're meant to feel the lows. But with our conditioning and what we've seen, uh, and you, again, you're in the sort of same age demographic as what I am, we grew up with commercials and um, bodies and billboards of figures that are showing us that we need to look a certain way. And that's just gone into our programming over time. Mm -hmm. 
Um, whereas now, of course, it is very much now um, with the social media apps such as TikTok, Instagram, Snapchat, and the filters such as Me Too, Facetune, Snow, Photo Editor, where you can modify ev everything you say. And I, I've shared a few photos on my own Instagram where waists are trimmed in, um, everything, shoulders are widened, jaws are like, what's the word for that? Narrowed? Yeah, <laughs> Cheekbones right. are lifted. Yeah. Um, there's like a hundred different things you can do and you wouldn't necessarily know unless you put another photo next to it. Now, what what's happening is these younger kids are just seeing these constantly modified images and I, I'm so fucking passionate about it because it does my head in. Yeah. And we get accustomed to thinking we're not enough as we are. And that's mm. as what Cricket said, well, this, that's what we're believing. We need to look a certain way mm. to be accepted mm. um, in society. And, again, it's presenting this perfect picture as what Glenn and Doyle spoke about in a pain going, we're feeling like we just can't achieve it. So what do we feel? We feel shitty. We don't feel enough. Mm -hmm. And and that's that's where uh, in in my book I did some research into selfie and Snapchat dysmorphia. Send me, and in send the me your book, please. Hey? Send me one of your books, please. Oh, I can do that. I can if not send one. I'll actually order and buy. God, working. It's not. Mind. It's, it's, it's in the publishing research. process at the moment. Okay. I'm, I've just got it out to a couple of readers. I've got a beautiful friend of mine, Gemma Darling, doing the, in, the illustrations for it. Um, but, yeah, it's pretty yeah, close. Definitely. Put that in the um, for people, 100%. It's amazing. <laughs> like, it's, it's amazing. And my whole thing is we are meant to be here to belong and be connected to each other in our flaws mm -hmm. well. and it's like sharing our stories and sharing our truth my problem was people were telling me what to do all the time it's like oh god get out of my head it's like yeah share me your story i'll share you mine and let's shift that way in our bodies not in our minds because our minds will keep us trapped all the time totally it's coming back to here isn't it it really is we they say that your authenticity you know it it's effortless and it is Mm -hmm. um, it comes from the heart space. We are all here to give back to another. Mm -hmm. Not one of us is more important. Not one of us is different to another. Mm -hmm. We just build these layers over time that mm -hmm. numb us from our true self. Yeah. Yeah. And when we're speaking from our authentic self, light just shines through you. It's mm -hmm. it's easy. It's energetic. There's, mm -hmm. It's effortless. If time could stop still when you share your light, whatever that light is for you, but you have to be quiet enough to listen to that and come back to that true self. And we look for everything around us to make us happy, the external, the hair, the body, the, the, the whatever it might be is what we were speaking about before. But nothing, if we could lose all of that in an instant, I could lose an arm, I could lose an arm and a leg mm. tomorrow, but I'm still here. Mm. And if we base our happiness on what we look like, what we own, how much money we make, wherever we live, we'll never, ever be happy. It must come mm. from within. Mm. 100%. And, and just um, a tip, if anyone out there, because as you're saying that, it's like, bloody, like, you know, I became a beauty therapy and therapist and all I wanted, I would get up in the morning and just, stick, like you said before, Meg, can, has someone told me I look good today? Has someone told me I look good today? I longed for it. I'd go to my sister's <laughs> house or... It, can someone just validate me? Nothing. Okay. And I don't know if yeah. just put energy and effort into what I look like. Energy and effort, energy and effort, nothing, nothing. The minute I started yes. to do this inner work on myself, the minute I started, so it's like this energy, this vibration was out there of needing, needing, needing and triggering. Yeah. And, and the minute I started and to more of that comes back to you as well, so more yeah. luck. Just keep coming back. hundred <laughs> percent. And the minute I started doing the internal validation of, not even anything to do with my looks to begin. But it's like, you, you, it's okay. You're beautiful. You're amazing. You're good. You're a good person. All of a sudden, I actually remember noticing all these compliments starting to come. And I mm. remember thinking, if they just come off me, because I'd be like, I actually didn't care. And yeah. the more you don't care and the more you do it internally, the more came. And I'm like, how all of a sudden did it go from nothing when I tried to everything when you're just being in your own life? I got goosebumps. Uh, I so do. And I, I, I sweat. I literally get sweaty. <laughs> this is this is this is, uh, this is what this is all about, and it so is when you just show up, and that's what Cricket's talking about. She started to show up and believe in herself. She started to just show up and go, "This is me. I am worthy. I don't need anybody else to validate me. I'm. I can do it myself." And when you do that, it's freaking attractive. You lift your vibration, lift your energy, and people are like, "Whoa." Like, I want to be around that, yeah. you know. 
And that's exactly it. We can choose where our energy goes and what we carry with us. Um, and the more we practice it, yeah. then it becomes easier and we attract more of the same. Oh, look, 100%. And, and now it's making me go back to you talking about all these apps, right? You know what? Mm. It's like anything we give our energy to, anything that we give our power to, we've lowered our vibration. So in that moment, it's like, you know, I need – and these aid, these these me medias, they know that. It's like I'll just keep oh. that person unempowered because then they're going to need this. I'm going to keep them unempowered. But if you look at it in a way if it's like whatever, you know, you, you can't have the power over me, it, it, yeah. then you get your power back in that moment. Like, does that, yeah. You know what I mean? It's like they're going to be there because I thought about it before you asked me, God, in a perfect world, wouldn't it be great if it wasn't? But it's kind of been even before that magazines and things like that, you know, I couldn't look mm. at a magazine because it would – it promote promote my or trigger my disorder whereas yeah. i got i trained myself so well to and this is what i do with my girls i trained myself so well to go that's their full-time job they are focused. Yeah. good for that five percent of the world whatever that's not me this is where i'm at so i think teaching self-awareness it's like they're going to be their kids don't yeah. buy into it because the minute you do and you go into that limited way of thinking you're trapped, yeah. you've lost your vibration, you've become lower and you've given your power away. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Uh, it really is. It's it's getting underneath that and also asking our question ourselves the question, if we feel the need to to uh, say, let's say, uh, to buy a certain product to make us look different or to modify our bodies, which is what's going on in the younger generation, we need to actually in that moment uh, is, is about what Craig said, well, take a deep breath, pause, ask yourself the question, why am I feeling the need to do this? And it, it then sparks the inquiry for, for us to do the work, to go, okay, I'm feeling a little bit anxious today. I'm feeling um, a little bit, um, you know, there's a story going on there. And it, it starts to give us the, the ammo to sort of unravel a layer and go, hang on, what's underneath this feeling? Why am I feeling the need to to numb or to change something about myself? And that is a beautiful, beautiful gift from the universe to go, hang on, there's a little bit of work that we need to do here. Mm. I was constantly faced with that when I was writing my book. I was writing the book like it was my the hugest healing journey ever. Mm. Um, it took me three years because it wasn't ready until now and I'd go through it, I'd write a story and I'd be like, fuck, yeah. shit, yeah. <laughs> I need to face that. So all this stuff was coming yeah. up and I'm like, oh, well, girl, like, yeah, <laughs> you know, I'd write something and I'd be like, oh, shit, I want to go reach for the bottle of wine because this is yeah. really difficult to write. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. And I just had to face it. I'm like, yeah. wow, okay, cool, that's an old story. It's an old limiting belief of not uh, from year one when somebody said I was stupid. Okay, right, it's just getting under this, yeah. um, get, under the and, layers. And you know. the, way I, the way I look at that too when you say that, I used to hate it because I'd be like, you do one layer and I'm like, oh, I'm healed. I'm amazing. Yes. This is fantastic. I feel fantastic. This is wicked. And then all of a sudden some more shit comes up and I'm like, yeah. oh, what is this? So now I'm yeah. like, I thought I was good with that. I was like, fire yeah. out. <laughs> I literally am like, okay. This has happened somewhere from naught to seven or it's been handed yeah. down. Yeah. I have to go back into that little girl in me and go, girl, I don't even know what's happening right now, but you've got me. So come up mm. and I will never judge you and I will return to love straight away because I just know too, the minute we turn to a more compassionate view of ourselves, that's the radiation. That's a love vibration. The minute we oh. don't buy into any of this fear that we're getting fed through, oh, yeah, but yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah, that's um, yeah. And the minute we can turn to a more compassionate view, that's the elixir, that's the vibration, yes. that's the lightness, that's the thing that people yeah. look at like, oh, I want more of that. What is that? Yeah. We think it's about what people look like. It's not. It's about the vibration. Because when someone's free, no matter what their size, no matter what they look like, when they're free, people want to be around them and people yeah. want to feel that. And doing it gives other people permission to do the same. Look what you're bringing exactly. out of me. Yeah, exactly. This is, and this is it. I'm so glad you brought that word up. I'm just, uh, for me, it was, I never, I never ever thought that I would feel the way I do now. Never. I never knew how to feel love. I never knew how to feel compassion for myself. Mm -hmm. 
And I'm going to use the word acceptance because I go in and out of it, of course. And, of course, if I haven't slept, if I haven't looked after my diet, if I have been sluggish with my movement or whatever, I'm going to start to feel out of my alignment. Mm -hmm. And when I get kicked out of alignment, that's when I'm going to judge myself. That's when I'm going to compare. That's when I'm going to think shitty thoughts. And it's about coming back to equilibrium and balance. And I... uh, it, it's it's something that I do much quicker now than I ever did before. So I notice I'm out of alignment and I don't judge my judgment now. Mm. So I'm like, whoa, I'm super mm. out of alignment. I'm I'm judging. I'm critical of myself. I'm mm. saying this shit about myself. Oh, my God. Mm. Is that? And I have a conversation and then I'm like, okay, so what do I need? I need mm. to come back to compassion. So compassion for me, my heart opens, my shoulders mm. drop, my face mm. soften, mm. my breathing slower, and I feel soft and this openness nothing can get in the way of that no matter what is going on in our environment we always have a choice to stay open if we're closed we're going to be resentful we're going to be judgmental we're going to be critical and that's talking on a bigger scale too with especially what's going on at the moment it's so easy to close and all we can do and we have the choice is to remain open which allows our heart to offer compassion to others also you give them permission to do the same Mm -hmm. That's just it. By your response in compassion and love, it might just spark the question to go, hang on a second, maybe maybe I can do that too. Yeah, sorry, I just had to hang up a call. Is that fine? Someone was calling. I didn't put onto aeroplane mode. I've got you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, got me. Great. Yeah. Um, yeah, Meg, Meg, I, it, it, it really is. Like I, I love and the way you explain it and the reason I'm going to explain it. Oh, no, what's happening with my phone? Um is that that's the same thing like i again and, and by the way you said 33 when you're when you had your awakening yeah i thought you were 33 now no i'm 40. are we the same eh? oh no i'm like 46 yeah okay god that's literally stuck in my head i'm like what? but thank you for thinking i'm 33. i'm stuck in a time warp i think i'm about 30 and you're like 25 still anyway I know, I hear you. I feel like I'm getting younger. Yeah. It's so a beautiful the I, feeling. The way I look, the way I do, in case this helps any of you, anyone that's on here, exactly what you oh. said with alignment, is I can I can feel the limited thinking come on. I can feel the resentment, like you said. I can feel all of that come back. I can feel the fear. I can feel the stress. I can feel all of that. So I literally picture that like I've just plugged back in to this fear consciousness. I've just plugged mm. back in to the media to not to the you know i'm talking about body and food and everything now to the people yep. that need you plugged in there and then that's when i take a big deep breath and i go i'm out of that part of my brain that's old i need to become yep. a so i need to plug back into this adult right now that goes oh i love you you're okay no matter even if you're struggling no matter if you haven't exercised if you've eaten too much that you think even if you are judging yourself I love you and it gets you out yeah. of that fear based into that alignment that's how I do yeah. exactly what you said yeah and oh so so good this is going so many cool places this part of our brain too this is our prefrontal cortex um, especially right here this is our ability to make a choice and it is our ability as humans to be present we as humans are the only one that are blessed with this part of the prefrontal cortex mm-hmm. that actually allows us to think about thinking, and that is an amazing thing, which means that as exactly what Craig is said, we can unplug out of this reptilian brain, this um, area of our brainstem that is just, you know, focused on these old thinking, limiting beliefs, and come here and go, hang on, I'm here now. Yeah. What's here in this moment? That's right, love's here now. I can choose love. Yeah. We can come back to that. I like it's, it so much. And it's like, because the other thing, I'm like, where am I going? Wake up, you. Wake up. Wake up, third eye. Wake up. Where am I going? I'm going this way. I'm not going back there. It's like, wow, that was close. What's ahead of me? Where's what oh, am I intend on? This is why she's a powerhouse. How good oh. is that shit? How <laughs> good is that shit? Oh, stop it. But that, that, thank you. <laughs> but it is. It's just, so, it's those physical mm. reminders. It's like, hang on, tap. And, you know, like, yeah. you know, we have our five senses. What can we see? What can we smell? What can we taste? What can yeah. we hear? It brings us out of there straight away. But part of yeah. it now yeah. is, like, intuition, come in. Like, there's yes. a consciousness that is available to all of us, our higher self. And I'm like, come on, girl, because you know a lot more than I know. <laughs> so, yeah. And, you know, what we may as well 
we may as well choose love, right? And if it's not love, choose kindness. Yeah. Because we have a choice no matter what. Mm. And we can either choose to feed that dragon of judgment and comparison mm. and self-sabotage mm. for however long. Mm. But the more you keep choosing that, it's going to get stronger. That's mm. going to just strengthen those neural pathways. Mm. So we may as well choose a path that is going to feel different, unfamiliar, uncomfortable, but to start to boost ourselves up and go, you know what, I'm fucking worthy. Mm. I'm fucking more than enough. Hey, you and watch I believe your language. You watch, your, watch your language. Just kidding. I love your name. Do you know, do you know, I actually had a comment on my YouTube from somebody quite angry that I used the word fuck. And it's like, I what's your it. language? I love and I'm it. Like, I'm like, thank you. I think it is so clever because I love saying fuck as well because it's expressive. It's good. But yep. watch your language. When I saw that, I'm like, first of all, not even like the F bomb. It's like, whatever. It's just an expressive word. But watch your language, like watch how you're talking around people. Like, you know, have a real think into it. If you're complimenting someone, they could have an eating disorder. And I'm not saying it's not nice to say, oh, gosh, your energy is amazing or, you know, mm -hmm. like trying to reword it. And that's how I view what you are called. Is that what it is? Watch your language, meaning watch the way you speak to each other. 100%. You talk okay. to yourself and talk to others. So totally. Clever. So clever. Not about swear, swear as much as you like, 100%. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love it. But, I, interrupted, um, I interrupted you. This is all shit at school. Go talk again. No, it's all good. It's all good. This is what it's about. But it's, um, yeah, just uh, very much just pay, pay attention. We, we may as well start to choose to be kind. It's 2021. Life is short. We None of us know what's going to happen tomorrow. Mm. None mm. of us. Mm. So go and live today. Mm. And what does living mean? Putting yourself mm. first. Mm. Choosing to talk better to yourself, choosing to be here and go, hang on, what can I be grateful for? God, we haven't even touched on gratitude. That's another conversation. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, but let's let's let let's do book another one though too. If yeah. you have to, because I, yeah. I I've got a few, little bit more, but I've got a client at four thirty. Yeah. But I'm really let's book like get it so the people that are here. Let's book another one because I could just do this like all the time with you. I yeah. Love it. Well, yeah, let us know in the comments too, guys. Give us um, a little talk. But I think gratitude would be a really good one to talk yeah. on. This there's this, this woman, she is just beautiful. She is so full of knowledge. I want to just, uh, because I want to, I talk to a lot of mums myself. I'm not a yeah. mum. I've got a yeah. very friend. Yeah. But I just want, if there's anything that there's any mothers out there, because I hear the words all the time, what can I do to fix my daughter? Mm. I'm doing all this stuff. I'm I'm working my, I'm, she's not eating. She's not doing this. She's got a bad relationship with and for me, and I, I don't know the answers, I don't think any of us do, but for me it's about being the light that you wish to see and you can only lead a horse to water, but we have to be a light for others and show, not tell. Um, we have to show up for our own worthiness and our own kindness and our own selves, and I think that's what our young ones see. However, as I said, I'm not a mum, so I, I want to leave this up to you. If you're a mother out there, that is going through that ride. Uh, that is so common. It is so common. Um, what do you What do you have? So Meg, even what you just said then, and my other thing is, we are all mothers. Even when you're not yes. a mother, we're all mothers. Like you're yeah. in, in any way, whether or not it's to your freaking delicious dog that I'm obsessed with, whether or not it's to your own inner child, you know, the yeah. little version of you that needed to hear stuff. Even if it's you know to our other friends, kids and aunties, like we're all mm -hmm. all a mother. I really do believe yeah. that. Yeah, um, I, I do. Yeah, 100%. And I, what you just said about show, not tell, it's like we can tell. I remember having a conversation with my mum. I remember pivotal things. I don't remember my freaking, don't know where my car keys are. Sometimes I forget my kids' names. Like I'm shit with stuff like that. <laughs> but I literally remember, I seriously remember moments that I've had which my husband's like, how the fuck do you remember that when you can't even remember this? And I remember getting ready with my mum, right? So I would have been about, yeah. oh, how old am I? Don't worry. I would have been about 35, maybe a little bit older, getting ready yeah. with my mum for a wedding. So we were staying together. And she's beautiful. This woman has been beautiful her whole entire life. She has put mm. so much energy into what she looks like. At this stage, she's 85 now and she still does diet, heads up. Um, yeah. She's been about 75, stunning. So she's getting ready, talking about how she looks fat, 
um, whinging about her outfit. And because we were staying in a hotel together and I'd done this work on myself, I was just like, mum. And I said to her, I said, we never had a chance with you. I said, we never had a chance to even know our worth because you never showed us our worth. Because I talk very openly with her now. And mm. the thing is, it's like we think if we say to our kids, do this, do this, do this, and then you'll look, you know, you'll be worthy. It's like they don't, mm. no matter what you look like on the outside, you can't feel worthy unless it's modelled to you. It has to, no. like what you said, it has to be modelled, yeah. I believe. It shines out of you. Yeah, and it's still. And it's, and it's not a physical thing. It's a, and, and, and it's still, like we've, we've really said, being honest, you know, my, my girls, I had talks to them about what I was going to do with you, <laughs> very different conversations. I'm like, so talk to me about TikTok. La, la, la. What do you like? And I do kind of check, but not really. I'm going to be 100% honest. And only because I, I feel them okay. If I was starting to worry, I would. But yeah. I, I talked to them about it and one of them said to me, you know, I said, what, what are you looking at? And one said, no, no, I, I look at things that make me feel good in my body. I look at things with all different shapes and sizes. I look at, you know, this kind of stuff. And I said, well, you know, do you, do you like what you look like? Like, where are you at? And they're like, oh, you know, not really, sometimes. Like, they're so oblivious to it even mattering. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because... Yeah. And then I talked to them, I said, do you think it's because I haven't really brought up what I look like or I don't talk about, you know, my weight or we just, you know, and they're like, maybe. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it yeah. is just that modelling. It's just not something that goes on in this house. It just isn't. It just is not. I can't even explain it. No, yeah, I think you've explained it perfectly. Um, there's but, no right or wrong. However, however Meg, mm. to be honest, though, what you're doing and the awareness you're bringing because it, it actually is in a lot of houses. Do you know what I'm saying? So there needs to be loads more talks and loads more conversations to kids about this isn't real, this is, re is real. I, as a mum, if you're asking me this question, is I have been ridiculously honest with my girls. I don't sit there and tell them from learning from mum, do this, do this, do this. I sit with my daughter and go, when I tell you to move your body, do you know why I'm saying it? Because when I was your age, I was trapped in my room with a self-loathing eating disorder. That's what yeah. I don't want you. I just want to know you're feeling healthy and good in who you are. Like, so I always share my experiences so that they have empathy and they learn it for themselves. I'm so emotional. <laughs> um, because no, no, on it because it's so true. Honesty and showing up and talking about the things that are difficult is where it's at. I what uh, I grew up in a beautiful, beautiful family, but emotions were never talked about. And uh, I talk about this very openly in my book, and it's not anything to do with my beautiful parents. It's just what they knew and because it was really hard. So I stuffed it all down, and I cannot – that is the most beautiful answer, Cricket, because everything should be talked about. Be vulnerable with your kids. Say, this is really difficult. I'm really struggling. Just or whatever it is, be open with them. Talk about the things that are difficult. It doesn't have to be with an eating disorder. It doesn't have to be with body image, whatever it is. Show your vulnerability. Be open and honest and be okay with feeling every single emotion because otherwise things just get stuck and they come out in our physical selves. So you have just gifted me, I swear to you. You Like, like I said, I know I, I have studied psychotherapy and I learned that we've got to communicate this, but I still do it and I still go, oh, that's too much. And now hearing that from you as the daughter, like, do you know what I mean? Like, I know that with me, but I, I'm just going to share a little story. Why not? Fucking hell. So the other day I had a pivotal moment with my, um, with my 15-year-old and th this is what happened. I, I walked in and said, get the get out of bed, outside, breathe, get out, get out. And, and she said a little comment like, oh, what do you think I'm fat? And I flipped. I like went out of this responsive part. I went in this react. I was yep. so triggered on every level. And I instantly cried and went, do you even know what I do? And then I walked out of the room and I was like heart pumping. I'm like, what is happening to me right now? What is happening to me right now? Like I just wanted to split because I'm like, have I taught her anything? Like, where, what is happening? And I went into this flip out and I remember standing outside of a room and just wanting to get in my, like wanting to leave. So I thought, this is too hard right now. 
And I had this saying in my mind, you can do hard things, you can do hard things, you can do hard things, just get back in that room with her, get back in that room. And I actually can't believe I'm saying this, but hey, let's just trust this energy between us. And so yeah. I walked back in and I was crying. And I said, and that's when I told her the story about the self-loathing. I said, when I was your age, babe, I was in my room. I was loathing. I just wanted my mum to come in and talk to me. And I said, I, I, and then we had a real open conversation about my eating disorder. She had known, but she didn't know to what she knew. Then she started crying and she doesn't cry. And I'm yeah. like, oh, I'm so, like, you know, are you okay? And she went, I don't know why I'm crying. And then I was like, oh, I hope none of her friends are watching this. And then, um, and then, yeah, and I said, are you okay? And she said, yeah, I, I just feel happy. And we yeah. had that moment together that it was like she got to see me in my raw vulnerability. She understands now when I go in and I say, please go for a walk. It has nothing yeah. to do with the physical. Of course she's going to say things about that. If we buy into that consciousness, that, that, that's feeding that. But just don't give it energy. Yeah. So that, no. I just want to share that. It's, it, there's no right and wrong. It's just do hard things. Have the hard-hitting conversations. Trust yourself. Um, don't judge yourself. Return to love. Open your heart, you know, even with our kids because their hearts will meet our hearts. We can't keep telling them, you know. My other daughter triggers the shit out of me. I'm like, you trigger me because you are me. You know, these feelings yeah. that are all coming it's out. It's a mirror. Of me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, we are a mirror. When we are triggered by someone, it is our... It is our mirror, it is our teacher to do the work and go internal and go, whoa, why am I being triggered by this? This person is me, I am them. But thank oh. you for saying that, Meg, because it really is. It's the hard conversations. It's the letting people talk about their emotions. It's So that's that's beautiful that you, you've really gifted me saying that about your mum. It really has given me more permission. Like, like I said, I knew, but when you're saying it to me, I can feel it and it, it is a real blessing. So thank you. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, I really feel I, I know that your your words are very much going to, to help um, so many people on here. As I said, it's uh, something that's just it's so common and we both know that. Um, but it's just something that's popping up so much more these days. And mm -hmm. as we know, the suicide attempts and self-harm attempts are up 50 percent in the last two years. And those stats are from New South Wales Health mm -hmm. in the age of 12 to 17. That is not what that is these are the numbers we need to focus on and it's actually and like it's just not okay it, it, no it's actually it's just not up. okay and, yeah. and again it's like you know the more we stay in this part of our brain and in fear and against each other it's like we need to crack back into our hearts we need to be talking about suicide we need to be talking about cutting we need to be talking about that because these people are in pain and the pain yep. is in the emotions that are trapped in their body that they're not that they have permission to release and to be witnessed and to heal no. and it's it numbing painful. Mm. yeah and it's it's a huge thing uh tara brock says what is it we are unwilling to feel we as adults numb with alcohol drugs mm. sex mm. shopping mm. whatever it is mm. uh even social media we we find something to run from because the emotions come up they want to be felt and then we push them back down and we numb kids mm. however uh 12 to 17 can't really reach for alcohol or whatever you can actually buy on that note you can actually drive buy drugs online these days through tiktok it's under the hashtag edible and any age can get them. That's another conversation. Mm -hmm. However, they're going onto these apps because they're mind-numbing. You can scroll, and this is where you see trends mm -hmm. of eating under 500 calories, of looking a certain way, mm -hmm. of, like, hashtag skinny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it, again, it's mm -hmm. just we've got to be really mindful and it's got to be spoken about. So thank you. Thank you, thank <laughs> you, thank you. Well, now um, I'm feeling like we can both but, take the little powerhouse um, words because they're both like, ha, ha, let go, talk, come up. Like, <laughs> in, yeah, it just is. I just, uh, I just want to remind you, everyone that's on here, um, Cricket has just spoken so much from her heart, you know, and so it's such a big thing to do. And we, we do, we both speak sometimes, and she mentioned at the very start, it's really hard and awkward and uncomfortable sometimes to be in this space. However, when we both speak from our hearts, when anyone speaks from your heart, and you'll know that also with your kids as well. You'll be like, I need to go and say something. I need to open up about this. I need to be vulnerable. You feel it. Mm. Then you don't get stuck with that energy. It doesn't hang on. You experience the moment as it is, however uncomfortable, however unpleasant, however unfamiliar, and you move through it and then you go to the next moment. 
I can't tell you how powerful it is to just go, okay, this moment is really difficult, but mm. I have to speak up. This is what my heart needs to do. Mm. Go do it. Go do it. Have the conversation. Don't don't ignore the conversation. Absolutely. Which goes back yeah, but... if, you, if you finish it in a beautiful loop, it goes back to the first thing where you said to me, how did I get better after my eating disorder? And it was like yep. speaking up, saying when I was struggling, bringing the shame mm. to the surface. Guess what? feel like binging, feel like throwing up. Guess what? Yeah. Just binge and throw up. It's like yeah. just talk it, bring it up, bring the shame up. These eating disorders live yeah. and thrive in shame. Emotions push down, thrive in shame. There's nothing shameful about feeling, absolutely nothing, and the world needs more of it. Oh, so much. I have goosebumps. I'm hot. I'm sweaty. I just <laughs> want to give you a big hug. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. I love what you're I'm doing. I'm so grateful. From the bottom of my heart, you're on the front line. You're bringing awareness to stuff that it's hard to talk about and it matters. Um, so I just want to say thank you. Back at you, girl. I, the feeling's so mutual. It's amazing what you do. So make sure you please jump jump on. She shares some beautiful stuff. So we're so in alignment with what we share. Yeah. But, uh, look, I can't wait for our next conversation. Um, Me too. Let's, let's organise that. Let me know when. I'd love it. Yeah. You're amazing. Love you so much. Thank you, everyone, for jumping on. So grateful. Thank you for having me, Meg. Oh, no, not a problem. Thanks for your energy. Hey, and guess what? Don't Beautiful, watch Beautiful day. Right? Never watch your language. <laughs> <laughs> love, girl. Bye. Oh, love you, too. Bye. Bye. Wow. I think Instagram's about to kick me off. I think we just went for an hour. What? What an amazing, amazing, amazing woman, right? I'm so grateful for her. Um, what a beautiful, honest and raw conversation about how we can look after ourselves and those around us. It must start with us, right? If we want to see change in others, Rumi said, be the light you wish to see in the world. It must start with you, right? And it's a practice, so be gentle. Don't judge your judgment. But start now. If we notice ourselves talking to ourselves like shit, just acknowledge it, tell ourselves that it is okay, and, and, and then choose again. Nothing shameful about what you feel. No, there never is. We can choose to hold on to shame and guilt and blame and let it consume us for the rest of our life. I've shared a separate video on that on my mum telling how she held on to shame for 30 years thinking it was her fault that I chose my eating disorder. It was nothing to do with her. It was my choice but due to my own limiting beliefs that I had stored in my own program. Nothing that my mum did, said or could have done would have changed the outcome as it was. But it was perfect every single way that it unfolded because there's no way that I would be here today talking to powerhouses like that if I hadn't have gone through what I'd been through. So however... And whatever is going on for you right now in your family, those around you, choose to be open. Choose to talk about the things that are difficult. Choose to offer up your own vulnerability and say that it is okay to feel. Everything is meant to be felt. Everything is meant to be experienced. And that's how we come back to love. Thank you so much, everyone. I'm so grateful. Look out for a second conversation with that amazing, I'm actually super emotional. I'm just buzzing after speaking to her. So, so grateful for you all jumping on for that um, beautiful, beautiful conversation. Much love.